Get ourselves a bolt in. Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here, and today I'm back with this Roman catapulter. So this is a piece of Roman siege artillery that will go very nicely with my trebuchet, side by side, obviously completely different periods, because this one is about, well, about 100 AD, something like that. Trebuchet is, of course, about 1300, 1350. But this was sitting in my cupboard, and the Slow Mo Guys came to me a few months ago for their new show, Slow Mo Guys Big Adventures on Sky TV, asked if I had some interesting things to film, here we are. I made it 10 years ago. I just never made a stand for it. So I never even shot the thing. So I dusted it down, made a stand, get to play with it. So they've had their turn and now it's our turn. So we're going to film this thing. We're going to tune it. We're going to talk about the engineering. We're going to shoot it. We're going to see what it does. So I've built swamp racers. I've put jet engines into motorboats. I've built electromagnetic cannons. And I was asked to build one of these, to head the project, head the engineering team, to build a double size one of these. So this is what's called a three span machine, and it shoots the bolts that are about this long. We built a six span machine. It's TV, you always build it bigger, don't you? And the Romans never built them that size, but who cares, it's TV. So just have a look at this clip where we started to test it. Now the first thing to do is to clear the air, because I have called it a catapulter, not a ballista. Now half of you are going to be screaming at your screens at this point, going, it's a ballista! Let me explain. So the Romans had many kinds of torsion artillery. The ones that shoot rocks and balls out of a bow type arrangement like this are called ballista. The ones that have a single arm that swings forward with a sling on the end, onager. They throw rocks, both of those kind. Okay? Catapulta throws spears or darts, arrows, call them what you will, pointy, sharp things that look like that. Ballista, ball. Catapulta, arrows. Okay? Later on, of course, you get other sort of problems in that we lose the terms. And so you get to the medieval world and you go catapult, yes, that shoots rocks. Okay? Nobody's quite sure what a catapult might be. But anyway, they throw rocks. We know that. And then you get other terms thrown around like a scorpion. What's a scorpion? Well, a scorpion is a one-span version of this. It shoots darts that are about this long. It's the same machine. And we're going to come and talk about the engineering of these things in another film later on because they are fascinating. But you make the same machine, just a different proportion that shoot bolts of this length or bolts of this length. Or, of course, the two-span version of that length. I am adamant that this thing is called a catapulter. And the reason for that is the TV company found an expert for us. Somebody who could come along and guide us in the building. It wasn't just a random dude they found down the pub. The man's name was Alan Wilkins. And three men were instrumental in putting a book together. Len Morgan, Alan Wilkins and E.W. Marsden to write Roman and Greek artillery. This is the second volume. And if you don't know it, and you want to build these things, go buy it. It has every detail, every number, every size that you could ever want for building these machines. Priceless, absolutely priceless. And it was a pleasure to spend a week with Alan Wilkins, lovely guy. But as far as I'm concerned, he called this a catapulter. And if he calls this a catapulter, and he literally wrote the book on them, that's good enough for me. I still haven't really answered why I made it. I made the first one because TV paid me to make it, and it was great fun, and it really was. It was a really interesting project. But I was so enthused by that project, and meeting Alan Wilkins, and, and just talking to him about all these things, and understanding more about something that I didn't really understand anything about. I just wanted to come away and make it. You know, the, the simplicity of it, the complexity, the, the beauty, the concept behind it, the structure and the logistics that the Romans used to run these things when, in the nicest possible way, English people are living in mud huts and they're issuing, you know, artillery manuals for where you can cite these things. Just, it blew my mind and I needed to get involved and make one. But also in a very geeky engineering way, you know I love to find out things. And this is one of the only pieces of engineering that I've come across that scales up and scales down. 
And what I mean by that is if you imagine something like a jumbo jet, if you build it three times the size, it doesn't fly three times as fast. It doesn't do that. Engineering doesn't work like that. But these machines do. You can build a one third size one and all the timbers on it, one third the size, everything's one third the size, shoot 600 meters. You build it three times bigger, everything is scaled up three times the size, increases, shoot 600 meters. Some of you out there are going, uh, yeah, what's the fuss about? Other people out there are going, wow, that is amazing. Take it from me, it is really unusual. And I wanted to get involved in this world. So I came back and I made it. But I'm also a busy guy and I just never got round to quite finishing it. Did all that, never made the stand. And so in truth, actually, that's why the stand is a little bit off from the book. It's not quite right, but it got the job done. Sorry, I've rambled for far too long. So it's time that we go and shoot it. But I'll load it, I'll talk about it while I'm doing it, and then we'll go on a tour of the machine. So we're gonna pick up this machine as if it's just been shot. So we lift up the ratchet. You then got the ropes here on the winch mechanism. You pull that, give it a bit of slack. Now you can slide the whole trigger assembly forward. Now this is the way that all Roman and Greek artillery seem to function. The Romans, of course, copied the Greeks. And then in later times, this trigger system seems to have been abandoned by the Romans. But around about 250, the Arcubalista, which is a Roman crossbow, started to come in. This trigger system still worked in the siege artillery, but the smaller things, they moved to a rotating nut, as far as I can see. Now you can see that the power of this machine is really quite low. I shouldn't be able to do that. I've just got it out of storage. I'm just trying to learn it, trying to learn the machine, make sure it's not going to kill me because there's a lot of pent up power here. I don't know when this is fully tensioned, what kind of power is going to be in this, what kind of draw weight. I would think several hundred kilos and that's a lot of pent up power. So now though, it has got hard enough that I need to move to a single movement. I can't twirl it round and round. I think another couple. That'll do us, I think. But I can promise you, it will be getting very scary once we tensioned it fully up. So now the bolt goes in. And quite simply, just pull the cord. Let's start our tour with the engines of this machine, the torsion bundles. So a bow, a long bow, crossbow, is flexion. It's a spring, it bends. These ones twist. That's what gives it the motive force. So you put a stick through the bundle, you pull it. It wants to flick back, flick back hard in the case of this one, because at the moment I've got very little tension on it. So I've got the pre-tension from when I strung this, but no twist on it. And I can get that now that far, and I'm giving it maybe 40 kilos, something like that. 90 pounds in, in draw weight. It's going to go up a lot from there because a little bit of twisting here makes one heck of a difference here. Then we've got two laminated ash arms curved in a plated oak headstock. So this actually dates it. The earlier ones weren't like this, so you could increase the power, incre increase the draw length, but well, the power stroke, but we're going to come into that in later films talking about the engineering. We have the brass washers here. You can rotate them and then you can drop pins through to stop them unrotating and coming back. And that's how you add your pretension. But we're gonna go around the front now and look at the face plate. Now, when we come to the front of the machine here, we've got an armored plate. So you've got a decorative repousse brass plate here with a god on it. Under that is a steel plate because those bundles are enormously tensioned when you put them in, then you put the arms in, you put a pretension twist on them other way actually, pre-tension twist on the washers and then of course when you draw the thing back you put even more tension on them. A sling stone in there, an arrow, a spear, another catapulter dart, a ballista rock. All of those things will just absolutely destroy that bundle because it is under so much tension. You've got to protect it. Now the Romans also were very good at intimidating people, very good at being cool, having the best kit, looking good. So why not put a god on the front that can spit the darts? Because that's the sort of thing that they did. And they, you know, they'd write on, on sling stones. I bet they wrote on the darts too. Just looks awesome. The next important thing is the trigger system and the slider. Now this winch rope here 
it pulls the trigger back and the slider is attached to the trigger. So it's not this flimsy little bit of wood here sitting in the dovetail that's being drawn, it's the whole trigger that's being drawn. So the bolt comes back, fits between the forks here and that bar comes in underneath. It will not, cannot go anywhere. Doesn't take very much with a bit of grease, doesn't take very much to open that bar. The rope will then slip out from under the forks. It really is beautifully simple, but it's a trigger system that is ultra reliable and takes really high loads. And anybody who's involved in building triggers, triggers that take high loads through them are difficult to achieve to make them easy to work. These are easy to work. Roman, Greek, genius. And the last part of significant importance is the windlass. So what you do is you lift the ratchet bar up, you've got the ropes here and you pull them because actually sliding the trigger forward is always a bit difficult on this sort of device. You just help them along a little bit, you slide it forward, trigger goes up, bar comes under. And here you have the ratchet, so really aggressive teeth in here and a similarly aggressive tooth on here. Hundreds of kilos of draw force. You don't want this to give up when you're not expecting it. Nice bit of weight on there, goes in and it just drops itself down. So there's no springs on it, it's just purely gravity. But what you do have is a very positively engaged system. It will not fail. We'll talk our way through the loading and shooting procedure again, but now you know a bit more about the parts. So, ratchet off, slacken the winch, slide the trigger forward, down with the forks, in with the bar. Just making sure nothing is too tangled, dropping the ratchet back in, and then winching around. Get ourselves a bolt in, Oops, forgot the trigger string. Lift, aim. And that was kind of a nice shot, I think. Because the problem is actually, it's very difficult to see what you're shooting at. So I reckon, because the whole machine, the headstock is in the way, I reckon this is very much a team effort. And then the ratchet back on. Oops, still getting used to the machine, so I'm sort of fumbling it a little bit. Winding it up. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if the Romans had angle gauges of some kind on their machines, somebody will know out there, and that it would tell them exactly what range that they were doing. Bolt into place. Lift, aim. That looked like a good one. So again, just putting the stand up underneath because that way it allows you to get all of your distances very easily, but it keeps the working height at a good height. So like I say, the stand was a little different on the originals, but I had to knock this up pretty quickly. So trigger back down, bar back in. Rope's untangled, ratchet back on. Everything's working fine now. Wind it up. That'll do. Oops. Left and, oh, again, couldn't quite see, but it felt all right. Stand back into position, ratchet off. Winch pulled open, trigger uh, fingers down, trigger bar underneath, ropes untangled, ratchet back in. Bar back in. This is the last of them for now, I think. And the bolt back in. Remember the string this time. Lift, 
Um, and shoot, over. Got the guy behind, I guess. Right, that's it for now, I think. And here we are at the end of film number one with the catapulter. And it won't be the last, I promise you that, because we need to find out how I can make it more powerful, what problems I get on the way. Will it explode? There's always a chance for that much energy. Uh, how far will it shoot? What will it shoot through? All these are questions that we're going to go and find out. We'll find out because we need to find out. Will it ever do the 600 metres that the Romans thought that these machines could do? Well, we can find that out too. Personally, I doubt it will happen because my experience of these things is that you have to put so much time and expertise into learning one thing to get the best out of it. I haven't got time for that. But will I have fun trying? Will it be a lot more powerful than it is now? Yeah, that is for sure. So one last shot and we'll see you again. I hope you've enjoyed it. See you again, guys. Nice one to end. <laughs>